Now we've harvested the jade perch from the aquaponics system, it's time to split the remaining silver perch between the two tanks. Thought I'd bring you folks along for a bit of a gander. How's it going folks, it's Rob here. Today we're moving half the silver perch from tank A into tank B. Tank B used to be the home of the jade perch, but we harvested them out a couple of weeks back. If you want to check out that little clip up there, you can see how we went with those guys. Um, the main reason I'm doing this is so we can split the load, the fish load as it were, between the two tanks. And we'll pretty much all be running these silvers for a little while now until we know what's going on with the renovations for the house. With this slot here, I've spotted a couple of deformities in the um, underwater camera vision that I've taken of them. So I'll be keeping an eye out for them as well, and I'll give you guys a bit of a look at them. I know for a lot of you Aussie aquaponicists, um, this won't be that interesting or riveting. You've already seen your own fish, but for you folks in the States, it'll give you a bit of a closer look at um, the silver perch, uh, the other native species a lot of folks use here. So without too much more nattering on, I'll give you a look at how I've rigged up the pipe work again. It's the same as the J but you may have missed that and then uh, we'll get into moving some of these fish so just down here on the base of the silver perch tank we've got the same valve outlet arrangement as we have on the jade perch tank and all that is is a valve uh, with the handle that we can take off so no one can drain it just to release the water down into the sump tank it just follows that hose work down there and i've also taken the bells out of the bell siphons so the beds have got a fair bit of water sitting in them at the moment as well and that's allowed us to remove a great deal of water from the fish tank itself. The water is actually looking a little bit murky. Uh, a lot of solids floating around because I realized that I've broken off the flange on the base of my solid lifting outlet. I'll just spin this around to give you a better look. And it was actually sitting on an angle like that. And there was a pile of um, crud that wasn't being taken out. It was going out through those slits that are a little bit higher up. Um, it's just something I never modified. It was in there. It was doing the job. So I need to um, replace that pipe and that flange at some point very soon. Uh, for the time being, there's no small fish in there, so it's not urgent. It doesn't have to be done today. And from there, half of the fish will be going over into here. Now, I've noticed that there's quite a midge fly colony has built up in this tank while there's been no fish in it. Um, you might be able to see the little um, white dots on the wall there with a brown speck in the middle. That's a midge fly larvae. They make a little like a cocoon on the side wall of the tank. I see them in the filter all the time. And I notice there's a whole heap on the base as well. Just to give you some idea, I've turned the water off there. And you can see the sediment that's just pooling on the base there. That's because there's no fish swimming around down there, disturbing those solids so they can come up and out through this um, solids overflow or solids outlet down into the radial flow filter. So better turn this valve back on. And I'll set the camera up and we'll pull some of these fish out. So I want to get round about 20 fish at least over. So these guys have definitely seen me coming. That's three. Might just take that out because it's uh, making it a bit hard to see. Oh, we've got two in there. So that's five. Oh, well, here's a nice size one. I'll give you a bit of a look. Just quickly though, because I really don't want to stress these guys out. So, very sleek, beautiful fish. Looks very healthy here. Um, this one here's got no defects on him that I can see. Um, so, we'll just pop him in quickly. I really don't want to stress these guys out. There you go, fella. Seven. Eight. Nice size fish, some of these. Here we go. Nine, ten, eleven. 
So this one here has what we think is a paintbrush tail. Um, there's no sign of disease or infection on the tail, but it's um, something I've seen in other fish. So I'll just go pop this one back in. There you go, fella. Twelve. Thirteen, fourteen. Number two. Seventeen, eighteen. It's a very small one. So this little fella here would be one of the runts. Um, there's probably three or four that are this size. They're not very large at all. Twenty. Oh, we've got four in here, so we're just going to put them straight in and call it quits, I think. That was a good one. There we go. The last one just had a bit of his um, side plate caught in the net. So, lesson I've learned, I might get a different net uh, with smaller holes again with these guys. Uh, with the jade perch, we didn't really have any issues with that. So, there you go. So I didn't find as many deformities on those fish as I thought I would, just that one with the paintbrush tail. I've had people in the past say, oh, it's just other fish attacking the tails. It, it, it isn't, otherwise there'd be some sort of an infection around it. Um, I had a look on the DPI New South Wales website and I actually contacted them and had a chat to them and they let me use a picture just to show the um, paintbrush tail as it pertains to silver perch in a previous clip. So, I'm fairly confident that there is no problem with um, other fish bullying them. Um, some of the fish there had beautiful, perfect, pristine tails, just like the ones on the jade perch we took out the other week. So I'm fairly sure that in that case that it is a congenital defect. Also too, there are some that I've found on vision um, when I've popped the camera into the tank that have a definite sign of scoliosis. There's a, a basically a curve in the spine itself. And I have noticed that the fish with the scoliosis do tend to have a bit more of a um, deformed tail as well. So it doesn't appear to affect the size they grow to though, because some of the quite large fish actually have that defect. The other um, defect that we've seen a fair bit is called axe head. And it's basically, it looks like an axe has been dropped on the head of the fish and they end up with a bit of a bump of a forehead and then a little bit of a purse, pursed or puckered lip um, sort of thing going on with their mouths. There are defects that you are going to get from um, any hatchery fish that is breeding with stock that they've had for a few years. It's inevitable that there's going to be some sort of inbreeding, so I've been told. Um, I spoke to one chap who wasn't aware that they even got defects and he thought he'd damaged his fish. So they are out there. Um, there's not a lot the hatcheries can do about it from my understanding other than rotating the genetics in their um, breeding stock. So these silver perch are normally found in more southern states of Australia, New South Wales, South Australia, Victoria, in the Murray-Darling River Basin. They do like it a little bit cooler than we have it up here. Uh, the jade perch are actually from a little bit north and west of here, so they can handle the warmer um, subtropical climate that we have here. The silver perch, uh, they are pretty bulletproof though. They are a very hardy fish, so they will handle water temperatures above 30 degrees. They won't thrive in it though. Their cutoff limit's around about 28 degrees from what I've seen. Um, owls got very, very sluggish once the water uh, temp hit 29 last season. So it will be something I keep an eye on here in our tanks. Just one thing for you folks to remember, if the water temperature does start to creep up to dangerous levels, throw as much air in there as you can. Warm water doesn't hold dissolved oxygen very well so the more you can pump in there the more comfortable you're going to make it for your fish until the temperature starts to drop back down again so hopefully fingers crossed we're not going to have to worry about that too much here uh, now these guys here I've seen a lot of people pull them out and um, harvest them basically around about the 400 gram mark uh, most people like to wait until they're about half a kilo or around about the pound mark two or three that I pulled out were definitely over the half kilo mark. Uh, one of them was actually a little bit larger than that again, uh, but a lot of them, even that small one I showed you, um, yeah, they're not really quite near that harvesting stage. 
That small one, and there's probably about four or five others in there, they're basically just runts. Um, it was explained to me by a gentleman in aquaculture that the, you always get a percentage of fish that grow faster than any of the rest. It's normally, he said, around about 10%, species specific, of course. And then there's the 80% that sort of me meander their way through life, um, growing normally at a steady rate. And you're always going to have about 10% that remain runts and never really grow to their full potential. So just something to keep in mind. You always will have a bit of a um, gradient in size. Some fish you can keep them in there for years and they're just not going to grow out to what you consider plate size. Any of the really small ones that we get here um, after the renovations if they're still around I'm thinking about putting those small ones in a balcony system, aquaponic system, just so they can keep it ticking over. We'll throw a couple of goldfish in there as well so they won't go to waste and we'll have them driving a system just not a big one like this. Well, the water behind me stopped making noise, so I've got to check on a few levels. If you'd like to see more aquaponic videos land in your inbox, you can click on that little subscribe button down there and you'll be sent an email whenever we upload a clip on the aquaponic system or something else that's going on in the patch and you can come along and say good day. I do hope you're all well and happy and that your patches and aquaponics are booming and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. Have a great one. Just before we go folks, I thought I'd give you a look at the base of the fish tank here. It's been just over 24 hours and these fish have pretty much all disturbed all the solids that had settled out onto the base of the tank and they've been uh, sucked out through the solids lifting outlet and deposited hopefully in the radial flow filter. Just to give you a bit of a look at the fish as well, uh, they seem to be pretty mellow in there. Um, they always get a little bit startled when I first drop the camera in, but yeah, they seem to settle down pretty quickly. You might be able to spot the uh, one or two fish with the axe head in there, and also too, the little fella with the stumpy scoliosis tail, and some of the others there with the paintbrush. I haven't given them a feed yet. I'll probably wait another 24 hours and just let them calm down a little bit more before I toss some food in. There you go, folks. I'll let you go now. I do hope you're all well and happy, and I'll catch you next clip.